If you have your Bibles with you this morning, we ask you to turn to the Gospel of John, John chapter 1, and we're going to begin reading in verse 29, the Gospel of John chapter 21, uh, we're going to begin reading in verse 29 while you're turning there, I uh, would always ask if your pastor for your prayers, um, I try to lead the church, that's what I need most, is to be led by the Lord. Uh, Gospel of John chapter 1 and verse 29, the Bible says, The next day John seeth, John seeth Jesus coming unto him, and he saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he of whom I said, After me cometh the man which is preferred before me, for he was before me. And I knew him not, but that he should come, that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore I am come baptizing with water. And John bare record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him. And I knew him not, but he that sent me to baptize with water, the same said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending and remaining, on him is the same on him the same as he which baptizeth with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. Again the next day after John stood and two of his disciples, and in looking upon Jesus as he walked, he saith, Behold, the Lamb of God. Amen. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for your word this morning. We thank you that you sent it to us as needy people, Lord, that we could feast on it um, as often as we would. We praise you for that. God, help us today as a people together. We need you desperately in the days that we live. Uh, we pray that you would save, Lord. That is the most needful thing. That if you'd come down tonight and that you would save, uh, by your goodness and mercy, one that's lost and don't know you. And the redeemed, Lord, we pray that we would always have the strength and the ability to say so. We pray these things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, fairly familiar verses of Scripture, and uh, we're really going to concentrate on seeing the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, when I say that, don't get me wrong, I don't, I, I don't believe anybody after the apostles saw him in the flesh. Paul was one born out of time, and that's denoted time and time again in scriptures, but you can see him in the fact that what he does all around us, when someone gets saved, when the sun comes up early in the morning, Amen. all these things speak unto us of the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, we live in a day and age today where almost the work of Christ is minimized into the teachings of grace. But listen, there would have been no grace uh, without the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, those five points are good. And I was asked yesterday in Aaron if I was a Calvinist. And I said, well, I really don't not like that word, but yet yeah, you would say that I am one. And I said, but what really matters is do you know the person of Christ? And this, this morning, that's all that really matters. I, I'm glad if you believe in grace, but what I'm more interested in, do you know the person of the Lord Jesus Christ? For so when it's all said and done, being a particular Baptist ain't going to be mattering. What's going to be mattering is do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? Yeah, that, that's all that really matters. We can come and live in this world uh, uh, 120 years, and it would all be for naught if we don't know the Lord Jesus yeah. Christ in a wonderful, personal way. Now, uh, I will say this, and then we're going to move on. When you know someone personally, it, it affects how you are. And I don't believe in ineffective salvation. Knowing and loving Donna for 33 years, it's affected me. And if me and Donna had been together a year or two and we threw each other aside, which is accepted today, but it ought not to be, 
I'd have to say I, don't, I didn't love her much, right? So do you love Christ or do you not? And if you do love him, do you love him with everything you got? Because that is knowing the person of Christ. That is being saved. Now, back to our text in verse 29. Now, if you know your Bible, John began with, the, uh, with a message of repentance. You, you know what our nation needs today? It needs a message of repentance. It, yeah. it, needs, uh, it needs that we would come as a nation before God as they did in Israel on our knees before him. And you know what I have really seen in looking at the history of our nation, we've not seen that since 41. Yeah. Uh, you know, the day that we were struck uh, the, in our Hawaiian Island base, uh, that was the last time that I saw our nation come to its knees. Now, maybe a little while in 9-11, but listen, that wasn't, that wasn't of much effect, was it? Mm -hmm. it? It was come and gone. But when uh, our naval base at uh, Hawaii was attacked, this nation came to its knees. And you know what? Better than that, it stayed at its knees for the next four years. And, and so we find then sometimes what it takes is what we would perceive, we would perceive as disaster uh, to really get us where we need to be. And so, and so John was preaching this baptism of repentance. And then in verse 29, the next day, John seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. Now, I want you to notice in this that he makes a very direct statement. This is the Lamb of God. And I want you to see that were many of them, even including Peter and some of his other disciples, were looking for the restoration of Israel. This man knew that he was the Lamb of God. That John uh, knew Jesus way beyond a governmental official. He saw him as the sacrificial Lamb. And you know, I want to say to this and go this far if you've never seen Christ. As, as the sacrifice, you've probably never been saved to start with because he is, the, he is the complete sacrifice, the fulfilling of the law, and the answer to sin, that's what he did. And the next day, John said, Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is he whom I said, After me cometh the man that is before preferred before me, for he was before me. And I knew him not, but that he should be made manifest to Israel. Therefore I am come baptizing with water. Now, I want you to see that John makes a prediction that he would be made manifest. Now, that is the missing ingredient in accepting your sinner. That's the missing ingredient in saying the sinner's prayer is that you never, there, there's never a revealing of who Christ is. That's the difference really than what we believe and they, they believe. Is it? He said it was revealed to me. Uh, you know when people are going to be saved? When he reveals himself. When, when he shows himself for who he is, that's when we'll see redemption. He said, it was revealed to me. So when he came on the scene, he said, hey, that's the one that's coming. Now I see who it is. And John bear record saying, I saw the Spirit, the Holy Spirit of God, descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him, meaning Christ. Now, I want you to see it wasn't a little dove, and you see these foolish TV shows where a little dove comes down and sits on this man's shoulder. Listen, it was the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, abiding in Jesus. Abiding on Jesus. And, and you know what? Uh, also, you know, that's how John said, this is how I know. You know, you know how 
You know if you're saved, are you led by the Spirit or are you led by the world? Do you enjoy this place more than you enjoy anywhere else? Or do you enjoy work more? Or do you enjoy your little activities more? That's a good barometer if you've met Christ. I'd rather be here than anywhere. I, I would rather be in the presence of the Lord's people as opposed to anything else. That's what I would like to do. And, and so we find then that he says, I knew him through the Spirit. Verse 33, and I knew him not. Now, I think this is an unusual statement, and I don't know, I don't know if they never met each other, but they were cousins. They, they were cousins in the flesh, Mary and uh, Elizabeth were cousins, and that would have made them cousins too. Or was he saying, I know him in a new way? Uh, I had a cousin, I, I, picked, I preached my aunt Georgie, it was spelled Georgia, but everybody called her Georgie. I preached my aunt Georgie's funeral probably 15 years ago. She was the last one of my grandmother's siblings. And she'd lived in Atlanta for years. Now, it'd probably been 30 years or 20 years since I've seen her. And I have a second cousin, and that's probably what they were. I had a second cousin named James that I hadn't seen in years. And immediately, we knew each other. And did we know each other because we seen each other? Because, listen, it had been years. I mean, me and James were like this when they moved down there. But we knew each other. I knew who James was, and he knew who I was, if nothing more than I knew that was Patricia's son, and he knew I was Gene's son. You see, they knew each other. But maybe, just maybe he was saying, I know him different now. That's not, that's just not Mary's son. That's the living son of God. That's the very man that will take away the sins of the world. And, and see, we, we find then in the modern day that many times that's exactly the difference in what people know him and when they really know him is they've known of him and they never knew him. You know, I really believe the ones that he will say, depart from me, you work for even iniquity, I never knew you, is the ones that knew about him but didn't know it. And I, you know what? I really believe just as they say, did we not prophesy or preach in your name? You know what? I believe they'll really say that because they thought they were right. See, when we, when we put spiritual things to nothing more than thinking about it, uh, we've missed the boat. I saw, I ain't going to say, a group here in Dover. They put it in the paper last week. Ordained a woman. You know, that's, that's completely contrary to Scripture. And every one of them would tell you that they saved. You see what I'm saying? Do we abide with the Word of God or do we let it go? You know what? A lot of churches today are letting it go simply to get numbers. That's it. You know, they'd rather have more people than preach the word of truth. Well, you know, I may be an idiot. I'm going to go with the word of truth. And when it gets down to where two or three are gathered there in my name, you know what? That'll be good too. That'll be fine with me. We'll keep preaching the truth. Yeah. Because that is what we as the Lord's people ought to be like. And so John has this revelation. My, that's not my cousin Jesus. That's the Lamb of God. That is the person of Christ. He's going to take away the sins of the world. That is who that is. And what a wonderful thing to know that. Verse 34. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. And looking up, as Jesus walked, he saith, Behold the Lamb of God. And the two disciples heard him speak, and they followed Jesus. Now, I don't know how many disciples John had. I know at his death he still had some, because he sent, he sent them and said, Are you Jesus, or do we look for another? Now, he had calm assurance then, didn't he? He said, that's the Lamb of God. 
But see, when he got down and he was locked up and his head was fixing to fly, man, he got discouraged, didn't he? Yeah. You know, we all can, woo, 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 but listen, when you're facing death eyeball to eyeball, it's a whole brand new story, ain't it? Now, I guess because I've been around illness as a nurse literally all my life. Even before then, I helped with my grandmother and grandfather. And when Papa had his stroke, I was seven. So, death that way, and you think I'm bad, death like that way don't bother me. Sometimes, in fact, if you think I'm really bad, it's a relief. But, when you, and probably John at this time, he was, you know what, he was only six months older than Jesus. So he was in his 30s. John was in his 30s too. Jared, you, you ready to get your head walked off? Adam, are you 29, you 30? What about it? You know, you like me would probably say, well, I still have children to raise. Well, we don't know that. I don't think John had children the best time to read the Bible, but he may have. You see, we've got to be willing to give something, don't we? And, and, and so we find then that uh, John wanted people to see, behold the Lamb of God, that's him, and in the end, instead of getting accolades, it cost him something. He lost two of his own disciples. But you know what? I believe he rejoiced in it. Listen, you see today, these big mega churches that they're growing like, growing boom, boom, boom. You know what? The only conclusion that I can come through to, there's not much beholding the Lamb of God. They're there to enjoy. You know, I don't mind, and I, I love when the Lord comes down and, and people are singing and they're praising the Lord, but listen, we're here to preach the word of God. I'm interested in people's soul. I, I'm not there to entertain. I, I, I'm not there to make to make a pleasant one hour around the things of God. What I'm interested is people. So, and what I want people to see is there is the Lamb of God. There is the answer to your sins. There he is. And so we as the Lord's people that ought to be our drive, whatever it costs. Now, you think about your own life and you think about different times that you knew Jesus had helped you through something. That he, you knew undoubtedly that he sustained you. And that it was, it, it, it was him that help you through the darkest situations. And that's really very much what he does. Uh, I want you to go, I want you to know this, uh, notice this about the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, John chapter 4. And we often don't think about this. The humanity of Christ. John chapter 4 and verse 6. Now we know that the Lord Jesus said, I must needs go through Samaria. There was a Samaritan woman there that needed to hear the gospel. There was a Samaritan woman there that he needed to reveal himself to. But notice what it says, and I believe that is just as much as I do the rest of the passage. Now Jacob's well was there, uh, John chapter 4, verse 6. Now Jacob's well was there, Jesus therefore being wearied, from his journey, sat down, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour, about noon time. Now, um, I, want, I want you to see two things in his humanity. Number one, he was tired. Now, you think about yourself, and so you may have walked longer than I have, but I think the furthest that I ever walked, when I was a boy at least, I walked from Carlisle to Cumberland City and back. at seven miles each way. Uh, 14 miles. And you know what? And, and no more than I was used to walking that far. And man, I walked everywhere then. We didn't even have a car. And so you walked where you wanted to go. When I got back, my feet were sore. And I was thirsty. It came to the point I almost drank out of the Cumberland River. Uh, but it, it, when I got down there, it was just too dirty. I couldn't make myself do it. 
And, uh, but I was tired. I was exhausted. And you know, mom, I thought, you know, she'll, she'll, she'll get, fix me some tea or something. She said, we should have done it anyway. <laughs> and that was it. She, no compassion. You see what I'm saying? And, and, and so he had been through that and he shows his humanity. I'm thirsty. I am tired. And the Samaritan woman came there and created an argument about him being thirsty. And the Lord saves her. You know, it, it is typical stuff when the Lord is working with you to argue with the person of the Holy Ghost, isn't it? Oh, I'm not that bad. I don't deserve hell. Well, yeah, you do. That's exactly what you deserve. If Christ doesn't intervene and do anything in your behalf, that's, that's exactly where you deserve to go. And, and, and so we find them... Uh, often when we're thinking about the person of Christ, we forget how human he was, how much that he was just uh, like you and I in that sense. Now go to the Gospel of Luke chapter 24, just a little further back. Gospel of Luke chapter 24 and verse 36. Luke 24 and verse 36 as they thus spake, and they were talking about Jesus leaving them, and they were talking about some of the stuff that the women had said, and, and they were rehashing everything again and again. As they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them, and he saith unto them, Peace be unto you. Now, this is the resurrected Christ. This is the Christ that had defeated the grave. And, and he comes through the stone walls of that building and says, peace be unto you. You know, you know what is the best thing in your time of tragic need? It's the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't care the worst thing that you can go through. If you know you're saved, you know what? It's going to work out all right. Don't be stressed about this election. You know what? He comes in and says, peace. If, uh, if Biden is our president, you know what he says? He says, peace. If uh, President Trump has another term, you know what he still says? Peace. Because, listen, Trump's no saint. No. And, and so we find then as the Lord's people, and I see this more and more, what we need to be doing is, you know what, I really believe this, if we focus on Christ, there's peace, and we focus on the storm, there's fear. And he wants us to be fearful, the devil, I mean. And so he, he says, peace unto you. And they were terrified. They weren't peaceful. They weren't, they didn't feel good about it. And they were terrified and frightened and supposed that he was had been a spirit or a ghost. They had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, Why are you troubled? I told you this was going to happen. I told you I would come out of the grave. I told you I would defeat death. Why are you troubled? Well, you know what? The reason they were troubled is the very reason we're troubled. They didn't believe the word of God. Right? Yeah, you ever wonder why you get stressed? Only thing I'd say is you don't believe the word of God. You don't trust it enough. You look around the building, we all have nice clothes to put on. We all have warm clothes. Uh, we all have a set, uh, a set of winter clothes and a set of, uh, of warm clothes. And we still get scared, don't we? We, we still get frightened. So he said, why are you troubled? And why do your thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and behold my feet. This is I myself. Handle me. See, see for a spirit have not flesh and bones as ye see me. Now, I want you to see he begins to say, you know what? If you don't believe me, just touch me. Feel me. Feel what I feel like. It's me, it's Jesus. It, it isn't a wonderful thing both to know that you know Jesus and you can feel him and you can understand him. And the harder thing for me is to know that he was hungry, mm -hmm. he would get tired, he would get thirsty, just as much human. Well, this is what I believe. The Bible says 
He was born in the likeness of human flesh. I think he had the pain of the human flesh. I think he had the difficulties of the human flesh. But I don't think he was capable of sin. Uh, I mean, and you know what? When it says, and he gave up the ghost, you know why I believe it had to say it that way? Because he was an eternal being. And if he hadn't gave it up, it wasn't going to happen. It didn't, know, it didn't matter how beat he was, he had to withdraw himself from this world just like he put himself in this world. And so we find then that he had a very great amount of humanity. And then a little further down, and we won't read all of it for time's sake, he says, have you any, have you any fish? Have you any meat? Have you any meat? They said they brought him a piece of broiled fish, and I believe that's like grill with the Lord. Uh, I'd rather have mine fried. But, uh, you know what? It filled an empty spot. He was, he was still in his humanity. People, people who are in humanity get hungry. Uh, we get tired. We get to the point that we're thirsty. And we see all these things about Christ. And, and sometimes I wonder, well, maybe that's why they didn't. It, it was hard for them to comprehend. But I always come back to this. Yes, he was humanity. And yes, they saw that side of humanity. Him even sleeping in the hole of the ship. But the real thing is this. He never had yet revealed himself. And there were some, I don't know if they... He ever revealed himself to them. I know he didn't Judas. And, and there, Paul, I mean, Peter had been with him two and a half years when he said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And, and Jesus himself said, That's a revealed fact, Peter. Most people don't get it. And the reason I say, I don't know all of them were. I, I never heard of the letter to Bartholomew. Have you? He was an apostle, was he not? Did he dig in or did he get out? I don't know. And, and, and so we find then uh, the Lord Jesus' humanity is really what made the, 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 the sacrifice complete. That's why we are in his notorious favor if we've been saved. is because he understood it. He, he knew all the conflicts and the, and the confines of this flesh, yet he sinned not. And so he became the acceptable and, and, and the different and, and the very specific person of the sacrifice. Uh, go with me to Isaiah. Isaiah uh, 52. Isaiah 52. And uh, verse 11, Isaiah 52, and uh, verse 11, the Bible says this, and he shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. I'm sorry, Isaiah 52, yeah. Isaiah 52. In verse 11, the Bible says this, Depart ye, depart ye, go ye out from thence, touch no unclean, go ye out of the midst of her and, you, and the clean vessels, and ye shall not go with haste. I still don't know what I want to read. Go with me, uh, but I, what I wanted to show you is the form of his visage Bible says was changed. The form of his visage was changed. In other words, he didn't look like a person anymore. 52 14. I'm sorry? 52 14. Thank you. And they were astonished or astonished at the and they were astonished at the his visage was so marred more than any man and the and the and, and his form more than the sons of men. So the way that he looked was completely changed. I believe on the cross, the misery and the, and the beating and the crown of thorns had changed him. 
Now, I'm not going to say who, but when I was an EMT, I worked this tape, I worked this call one time over right at the edge of Fort Campbell, and, and a, a bomb, uh, a fuse, I don't know what exactly it was, had blown up, had blown up on the boy that was uh, carrying him. He was younger than me. And when we got there, and we was trying to get him on the spine board, I looked, and all I could see was his eyes and part of his mouth. The form of his visage was, I mean, if I hadn't really known all the people that were around and, and seen the, what the situation was, I don't even know if I'd have recognized him as a person. I mean, there, there was just nothing there. Yeah. The form of his visage had changed. Now, I will say this, when Christ has the ability to change how he looks. Now, I do believe this was of a, just a brutal beating, but he can change it at any time, at any moment, because it's under his will to do so. And, and, and so we find the beating and, and the thorn, crown of thorns and all that he had suffered literally changed the way that he looked. Now, um, I want you to see with me in the Gospel of Luke 24, now a little bit further down. Luke chapter 24, and uh, we'll begin in verse 12. Luke 24, beginning in verse 12. Luke 24, and beginning in verse 12. <coughs> The Bible says this, Then arose Peter and unto the sepulcher and stooped down, and he beheld the linen clothes laid by themselves, and departed wondering in himself about what was that which was come to pass. So Peter bent down, and he saw the grave clothes over all by themselves tucked up, and all it did was to cause him to wonder. I, I wonder if they stole him. I wonder if, if they moved the body. I wonder what's going on here. Now notice uh, in verse 11, And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus. Now, that same day, meaning the day of the resurrection, the day that Jesus had risen again, which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs. And they talked together in all these uh, of all these things which had come to, which had happened and had come to pass that while they communed together they reasoned and Jesus himself grew near and went with them. Now I want you to notice they were talking about the problem, weren't they? They was on the road to Emmaus. I don't think they were looking at the trees and the flowers. I believe all that they did, oh, he's dead. He's dead, he's dead. What are we going to do? You know what? He's dead. He, 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 apostles are going this way and that way. You know what? He's dead. You know what? We need to sometimes just get past the problem, don't we? You know what? Um, newsflash. If the Lord doesn't come, everybody in the sound of my voice is facing death. Yeah. From A day to Brother Jim, every one of us. And so that's no big surprise, but you see people doing this about it all the time, don't you? That's what them boys on the road to Emmaus was doing. And you know what? He, <laughs> he was dead, but he's risen again. He, he was dead, but he, 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 he put death away in that. And so they couldn't find the means to rejoice in, in, in really the happiest day of all eternity, past and forward, he had risen. Now notice, uh, Jesus came, and they didn't recognize him. Have you ever thought, and I don't know if he does now, I... I don't think he does. He came to see Paul. I don't think he comes in the flesh anymore. But here, he didn't look like Jesus. Uh, I don't know how he looked. You know, the Bible says he was a man without form or comeliness. He wasn't good looking. Maybe this time he presented as a good looking man. Uh, maybe this time he presented 
as an African American. Maybe, maybe this time he presented as an Egyptian. So again, I don't know, the Bible says he, said he is sitting at the right hand of the Father, even now interceding on our behalf. But uh, when you think about different pre presentations, how, how has he appeared in your life? Now again, it's probably going to be a person. Maybe that one employee that drives you nuts at work and finally just explode on you. I had, I had that experience of a few weeks ago, and I'm not bragging about it. I, I did apologize to her. But she, you know, and I don't, certainly don't think she don't bear the light of Christ. I'll put that way. But you know what? She could, she could have been, what if she's an angel? I was if you didn't have angels on the and, and so often the way that we present and what he found them in is fear and misery. And have you ever thought an angel or the person of Christ looked at you and all you were in was fear and misery? You know what? Shame on us. Shame on us. And so we find then that these two men were in that situation. Verse 17, and he said to them, what manner of communication or is it? are these that you have one to another as you walk notice and are sad so they, 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 they you know you don't have to read into that they had the boohoos they had oh my goodness what are we going to do boo -hoo, boo -hoo. and one of them whose name was Cleopas uh, uh, answered and said unto him are thou a stranger in Jerusalem and has thou not known that things are what things have come to pass there in these days? And he said unto them, What things? Now I think that's a very interesting statement. What things? What you know, what are you talking about? Did they give him a downplay the last week? Well, he came in here on a mule like a king, and then everybody got mad at him. He, he was beaten beyond, beyond recognition. He was hanging, hung on the cross, and he died. Or did they look a little further? But now, that, that, that's what the Baptists would have done. So I'm assuming that they were Baptist people. That's what they came up with. You know what? I bet they didn't say, you know what? Along the way, we've seen this man uh, walk on the water just like it was stone. And we, we heard him we heard and seen him say, peace, be still. And, and, the, and the sea was under his command. We seen him say, Lazarus, come forth. And that dead man ran out of that grave. We said, you know what? I want to I wanna focus on things like that, don't you? Uh, yeah. But no, they had, you know, um, that was a good way. You know how I, when I used to teach, how I asked people, okay, at the end of the lecture, I, I would find one hopeless victim out of my student body and say, Jared, what are I teaching today? And you could tell when they hadn't listened because they had that what things look about, about them, you know? And uh, that's uh, that's how we are, ain't it? Well, who's going to get the presidency? I don't know. And you know what? You be honest, you don't know either, right? Is the economy going to crash again? Well, I don't know. But I do know this: if the ever living Savior at the right hand of God. And that's what I'm going to claim to. And when, I, when you look back across your life and you see again and again and again and again that he delivered you, why would we focus on anything else? And so the Lord Jesus gives them a lesson. And then in verse 25, notice what he says. And he said unto them, O fool and slow of heart to believe. Now, have you, have you ever wondered what belief level you are now different than the day the Lord saved you? You know, when the, the day the Lord saved me, I didn't know things about the Bible. I really didn't. I didn't know He was a sovereign creator, and everything in this whole universe 
happens after the council with his own will. I just knew the Lord had saved me. But you know what? It should come year by year by year. Review those things. You know, uh, I, I've got to the point sometimes I thought, well, I don't have anything else left to preach. <laughs> well, start again. The Bible says that on the end and of itself, it's a living word. Y'all can look at me when I was 18 and look at me now. I look at a different person, do I not? So that means there's still some good stuff in there for us. And, and, and so we find then, uh, as the Lord's people, we like them, sometimes we're just slow apart. We, we don't get it. We don't, we don't believe it like we should. And I would to God that I believed it more today than I did yesterday. Verse 27, then at, at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded to them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself. Verse 31, and their eyes were opened and they knew him and he vanished out of their sight. Now, that, that's a wonderful thing. Now, I've often thought of this. Where do you think he showed up next? He vanished, right? He, boom, he was gone. And the Bible says that they were in that upper room locked up, and he appeared unto them. I think he went from there right over to Jerusalem, and boom, there he was here. <laughs> and you know what? Both those groups, those two men on the road to Emmaus, and the 11 apostles left behind, they needed the very same thing, did they not? They needed encouragement, and they needed to believe more. They needed to believe more. Just, just believe what the Word of God says. And you know what I found? <laughs> it's easy till things get tough. It's easy till things get difficult. And then, <laughs> things... Things began to change. Last place I am going to read, and uh, at the stoning of Stephen, Acts chapter 7. Very familiar verses to you, I know, but we're going to look at it one more time. Verse 55 and verse 56. Uh, Acts chapter 7, verse 55, And he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God. And the glory of God is Jesus. If you, if you study the, uh, the headship uh, of, the God, of God and man and women, he was uh, standing, he was the glory of God, it was his purpose to share, uh, to cast light onto the person of God. And he saw the glory of Christ, I mean the glory of God, and Jesus standing on the right hand of the Father. And, be, and he said, Behold, I see the heavens open, and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Yeah. And so... Uh, he saw some new things too. Um, you know what? We need to see the Lord Jesus Christ and the person of the Holy Ghost every day in our lives. And this is what I found when I don't, it's because of me. When I, when I don't see him, you know, you can't, you can't find something unless you're looking for it. And uh, in our household, Donna loses everything and Sarah finds everything. And uh, it's kind of how we work. But you know what? Uh, Sarah don't scream and run around the house and carry on. Just very quietly, she goes through room by room and she says, well, here it is. You know, I kind of think that's how the Lord works, don't you? Just very quietly looks around and sees what the need is. That's what we need. We need to look for him more. 